Hello everyone, welcome to my Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Young and the Restless spoilers for Friday, December 8 indicate that Ashley Abbott, who will undoubtedly disagree with Jack and Billy Abbott's most recent plan, will argue with them. Ashley may believe that Billy's plan to combine Chancellor Winters and Jebbot's resources against Tucker McCall is exaggerated, but she will receive updates on it. Jack and Billy will undoubtedly want to proceed with some deceitful strategies, but Ashley would likely counter that it was a mistake to provoke Tucker. Instead of resolving the problem the way Ashley has been attempting to accomplish with her own plan, it can exacerbate it. Ashley will not give up easily, and she might make the case that more effort has to be done to mend the bond between Tucker and Devon Hamilton Winters. Ashley will be adamant about what she believes, so when she attempts to get Billy and Jack to change course, she will fight back. In the meantime, Danny Romolotti is going to spoil Christine Blair with a romantic evening that will most likely include the freshly prepared spaghetti sauce that she recently asked for. According to rumors for the young and the restless, Danny will undoubtedly prepare Christine something special, which will cause sparks to fly and push them closer. Phyllis Summers would undoubtedly experience jealousy if she finds out that this romantic evening is happening. Phyllis will be disappointed because it's evident that she would like to be the one in Danny's arms. On Friday's episode of Y and R, Michael Baldwin is reportedly going to take a starting stand. Michael appears to have a different perspective on the matter than Phyllis, so does he believe that Phyllis and Danny can reconcile? That's one possibility to think about, but it's also likely that Michael's directness will just startle Phyllis. Perhaps Michael will confront Phyllis about her jealousy and encourage her to give up hoping for unattainable goals. In any case, Phyllis may turn to sabotage if her jealousy gets out of control. It will be interesting to watch if this spells disaster for Christine and Danny. With its convoluted tale of Eve Howard's sister and the never-ending vendetta, the young and the restless struck gold. Thus, the show will attempt to make history happen again by pulling additional villains out of the vault. Head writer Josh Griffith says Soap Opera Digest, I'm always looking for menaces from the past because it's so much richer and more satisfying than bringing in some new villain of the week that nobody knows or cares about. It's going to be a gimmick and there's no emotional threat. Occasionally, a trick works. But when you bring it from the past, it does that, he continues. I'd much rather find a way that the threat and the danger tie into bigger issues. Griffith has virtually limitless options if he wants to unleash a fresh threat from the past. Granted, a few antagonists were presented to their creators, but has it ever prevented a character from resurfacing in a soap opera? Is Shayla Carter correct? Furthermore, there are many unstable individuals who are still alive and have the potential to cause chaos. Consider Isabella Branner, the insane person who attempted to kill Christine before being committed to a psychiatric facility. Ricky, the son of Eva Longoria and Paul, likewise lost his marbles and died because of the presence of Eva Longoria's old character on the show. She would undoubtedly also place the blame on Christine in her deranged mind. Therefore, what if the femme fatale was recast, possibly with Eva Tamago from Passions, and came back to get revenge on Chris at the very moment that she was re-establishing her relationship with Danny? Lisa Mansfield, what about her? You may remember that Brad Carlton's first wife, who was a bit of a rock star, once locked him in a cage with the intention of waiting for him to fall in love with her once more. Imagine that when the crazy lady returned to Gino City to look for her former partner, this time with Sarah Joy Brown, the MVP of General Hospital, in the role she found him dead. Broken-hearted, she might have believed she was seeing a ghost when she saw Bill Spencer, a bold and beautiful imposter, while in Gino City on business. He might try to make her understand that no, he's not Brad going by a different name, or else they might start an affair that goes horribly wrong. Naturally, the most notorious villain on Young and Restless, the evil David Kimball, is just waiting to crawl out of the trash compactor where he is said to have perished. 
He might still be able to claim his wife Nina's millions of dollars if he were proved to be alive. He might still feel the need to punish her, Danny and Christine. Additionally, he can put on his charm and deceive poor Tracy into a dangerous romance by pretending to be a changed guy. The new character on Young and Restless has been quietly making an appearance, so even the sharpest-eyed viewers might not have noticed him, but not in a bad way. He's actually stepping into the footsteps of Danny Romolotti, played by Michael Damian, for example. The actor Alan Marsh portraying the new character, Lester Thomas, has been making cameo appearances since the middle of November. However, he truly shines on Wednesday, December 6, when he engages with none other than the great Victor Newman and his spouse, Nikki. As her fans are well aware, Nikki has been receiving unusual calls from an anonymous caller in addition to having trouble maintaining her sobriety following her ordeal at the hands of Jordan and Claire at the lake house. When Nikki discovers that the strange caller is playing music she recognizes, everything comes to a head. She confides in Victor, since she can't remember where she heard the song or who taught her. The mustache instantly comes up with a scheme to name that music because he's usually ten steps ahead of everyone else. Victor's scheme? Entering the Neil Winters Jazz Lounge, he shows Nikki around while the house piano player plays some tender notes. Nikki hums the tune, and Nicta walks over to the pianist and asks him to play it. When Lester Thomas, the pianist, does so, he recognizes the song as Kitty's Bounce. Naturally, this makes Nikki very happy because she remembers dancing to this music when she was a stripper. Shocked, Nikki announces that the caller must be Jordan, who knows about her background and is trying to stir her up or subject her to more suffering. Lester continues to play the tune on the piano while she solves the puzzle, pushing La Newman to the breaking point at which point she yells at him to stop. Marsh plays Joja Black on General Hospital and can be seen in the offer, winning time and baggage in addition to his work on Young and Restless. Is a tenor singer who can play the upright bass, pipe organ, trumpet, and tin whistle in addition to the piano. Spoilers for The Young and the Restless indicate that Jordan isn't done making trouble for her deadliest foes. Jordan evidently isn't happy with how things worked out because the Newmans survived to tell the story. This is particularly evident now that Claire Grace appears ready to entirely reject Aunt Jordan and accept her biological parents. Claire will initiate the process of developing a true relationship with Victoria Newman and Cole Howard once a DNA test confirms that she is their biological daughter. Jordan will undoubtedly become even more agitated about that after she receives updates. Jordan desires the suffering of every Newman, particularly Nikki and Victor. It's obvious that Jordan won't stop until she attempts to discredit the Newman family through another conspiracy. Now that the story is entering a new chapter, may Adam Newman emerge as the protagonist, even if Claire's transformation of heart saved the day at the lake house. It's a possibility to think about because Adam could use a means of gaining some redemption points and proving to his doubters that he is now on the right track. Adam has had to overcome his own dark past, but he genuinely wants to start a family and settle down. If Adam proves helpful in Jordan's capture, Perhaps this is his chance. Adam isn't aware of any of the chaos occurring in Oregon right now. That might make Jordan appear to Adam as the person who just harassed the rest of the family when he runs into her. Adam might, however, eventually learn the truth about Jordan's identity and the terrible things she has done. Maybe Victor could count on Adam to assist him in apprehending Jordan and locking her in. Jordan might, of course, meet a terrible end when it comes time for her to go, but it would be wonderful if Y and R could preserve her alive for any more return engagements. It would be entertaining to keep Jordan around for future jail breakouts as he is an intriguing character. Nevertheless, Jordan's evil nature makes her unfit for long-term survival, therefore something has to be done to stop her. Will Adam put his family first and put an end to Jordan's terror reign? Will Adam need to accept gratitude from Victor, Nikki, Victoria, and perhaps Nick Newman for his valiant efforts. Stay in for updates on this chance for redemption, 
as spoilers for the young and the restless, suggests that Adam may be a part of this narrative going forward. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.